Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. Just to uh, update everyone, we're going to get started in about two minutes. Uh, people on the west, east coast, excuse me, are finishing up Maghrib. So inshallah, we're going to get started in about two minutes. Jazakallah khair. Dr. Mon, everything good on your end? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we're going to get started now. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to a live digital panel discussion hosted by Guidance Residential in collaboration with Guidance College, formerly known as Al Huda University. I'd like to thank everyone in the audience for attending. My name is Sayyid Salman Ali from Guidance Residential, and I'll be your host and moderator for the evening. To ensure we have a smooth event, the audience has been placed on listen-only mode, and to participate tonight, you will need to be logged into the webinar and call in so that you can hear us, inshallah. We will have a Q&A session after the panel discussion where you, the audience, will have an opportunity to ask questions through the question box. Let's take a quick moment and get ourselves familiarized with the question box on your screen. Please take a moment and type in the state you're calling in from. And if you're just joining us, welcome. We're just getting ourselves familiarized with the question box by typing in the state we are calling in from. We will have a live question and answer session. So please go ahead and find that box and type in where you're calling from. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, looks like everybody has figured that out. We have Fatima from Virginia. Alhamdulillah, we have Arish in Minnesota. Alhamdulillah, it looks like everyone is logging in, so that's great. Brothers and sisters, the program and format for tonight's event is divided into two sections. The first section will consist of a panel discussion with a renowned scholar on Islamic finance and a renowned scholar from Amja, followed by a live Q&A session. The second section will consist of two short presentations by the host organizers Guidance Residential and Guidance College. The presentations are intended to provide you, the audience, with more information about the two organizations. Tony, a member of our dedicated marketing team, is with me today and he's going to be supporting me throughout the event, so don't be surprised if you see him on camera. Thank you, Tony, for your support. I'd like to now introduce our guests for the evening who have joined us from two very different corners of the country. We have with us tonight Sheikh Yusuf Dalal De Lorenzo. Sheikh Yusuf is considered an authority on Islamic finance in the United States. He has translated over 20 books from Arabic, Persian, and Urdu for publication, including a three-volume collection of legal rulings on the operations of Islamic banks. Sheikh Yusuf has also been a pioneer in internet education with courses entitled Principles of Islamic Investing. He is a member of Sharia boards of several Islamic financial institutions in the United States and abroad, including the Dow Jones Islamic Markets and Guidance Financial Group. Sheikh Yusuf has served as Secretary of the Fiqh Council of North America and was an advisor to the Government of Pakistan, the Central Bank of Malaysia, the Hamdan bin Muhammad University in Dubai, the INCEIF, and the Stanford University Libraries. Sheikh Yusuf studied the classical Sharia sciences with scholars in Pakistan and Egypt. Thank you, Sheikh Yusuf, for joining us today. Thank you. It's my privilege to be with you. Jazakallah also with us tonight, we have Dr. Mayn al qudah Dr. Mayn al qudah holds a PhD in Islamic studies from American Open University and a bachelor's in art in economics from Al-Azhar University. In addition, he is an associate professor and a member of the resident fatwa committee of Amja, the Assembly of Muslim Jurists of America. Dr. Mayn is an experienced lecturer in Islamic studies. In his teaching careers, he has provided instruction and training to students at schools as well as the college level he is also a speaker at regional and national conferences. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Ma'in, for being with us tonight. Jazakallah khair, thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair, thank you, Dr. Ma'in. And I also want to mention to the audience that Sheikh Yusuf is on travel. So if you hear a disturbance on the line, we do apologize for that. Uh, 
Uh, we had some earlier disturbances on the line, so I just want to give you a heads up. Things look, are looking a lot better, but if you hear a disturbance, we do apologize in advance. Now, brothers and sisters, the topic tonight is Islam and purchasing a home in America. Muslim communities living in the United States who want to avoid riba in their lives find it difficult to navigate their options when it comes to home ownership. Many of them are unaware of the choices they have. Many of them are not sure about the concepts of Sharia compliant contracts, while others hold misconceptions regarding these contracts. The current financial system is built on riba. So how can American Muslims, uh, how can American Muslims become homeowners in the United States? Can educational institutions play a role in clarifying some of the concepts of Sharia compliant contracts? We'll be discussing this and more in the next hour and hear the thoughts of our distinguished speakers tonight. Now, without any further ado, I'd like to go to our speakers and have them make their initial remarks for about two minutes. And I'll start with you, Sheikh Yusuf. Thank you very much, Sheikh Salman Salman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my privilege to be uh, a part of this webinar this evening. Um, it's always a pleasure to uh, interact with uh, members of the community and especially on subjects that are close to my heart, uh, such as uh, finance and economic finance. Um, I have uh, been associated with guidance residential for, it appears now, 17 years, um, which is an incredible number, all things considered. Um, right from the very beginning, uh, I worked with the team that developed concept. Uh, I worked with the lawyer to develop the uh, legal documentation. I worked with the accountant. Uh, I worked with the business teams. And mashallah, uh, guidance has uh, taken some very big steps uh, over the past few years. And it has persevered as well through hard times. So through thick and thin, uh, guidance residential uh, has proved itself to be a very viable and uh, responsible, I mean, say, company. Um, I say responsible as well because I, uh, I perform audits on the uh, Sharia audits, not uh, financial audits, Sharia audits on the company from time to time, in fact, every year. And I report back to our uh, central Sharia board, uh, which is composed of an international body of scholars. So uh, just briefly, uh, thank you very much for having me, and I look forward to interacting with you all. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Sheikh Yusuf. Dr. Mayan, thank you for being with us tonight. Your initial remarks? <laughs> First of all, uh, thank you so much, Guidance Residential, for this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, thank you for taking the lead of reaching out to the community at large and to the Muslim community in specific. Uh, I do believe that we are in desperate need for more education about Islamic uh, finance, the theory and the practice. Uh, coincidentally, Today is the uh, first day of uh, the Hijjah, the most blessed uh, days, 10 days throughout the whole year long, according to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wholeheartedly to bless you all, guidance residential, the organizers of this uh, event, and to bless our community and to bless our uh, country at large. Uh, again, thank you for having me in this uh, webinar. We need to discuss uh, in more details the difference between conventional and Islamic uh, finance and the challenges that the um, Muslim community in the United States in particular are facing in, in finding an Islamic alternative for the conventional um, mortgage available in the market. And the effort has been done a while ago and is still ongoing by guidance residential to uh, implement what we believe is more socially responsible and more ethically responsible, riba uh, free uh, financing. Thank you all and Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Dr. Mayin. And if you're just joining us, we're having a live digital panel discussion hosted by Guidance Residential in collaboration with Guidance College, formerly known as Al Huda University. 
Sheikh Yusuf, the title of the event is Islam and Purchasing a Home in America. Islamic faith teaches a balance between this life and the hereafter and encourages striving for success in both worlds. At times, the Muslim community shies away from home ownership because they think they need to focus only on the hereafter and the home ownership is an affair of this life, therefore not worth pursuing. How can the community strike a balance between the two, Sheikh Yusuf? Uh, Listen, uh, uh, to answer this question, I think uh, we, we need to establish some fundamentals. To begin with, for a believer, the dunya is actually a means, a means of achieving the ultimate success, which is a zenith, or an afterlife in the eternal presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the eternal garden. Um, so as such, the dunya, you know, sometimes people think of it as, you know, the lesser. And that's why it has the name, dunya. Uh, literally, it means the lesser. But uh, it's really a place of, uh, uh, of preparation and testing. Um, and, and our place in it uh, is often uh, defined by who we are. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in, as very different individuals. That's why we are individuals. Uh, he is the merciful one. He understands and recognizes that people uh, are different, the times and the places that they live in are also different. And that some people are suited to some things like solitude and contemplation and ibadah, whereas others uh, are, you know, naturally inclined towards taking part in the in the worldly life. And most of us have responsibilities, from, you know, from 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 very young age. We take on responsibilities, and so we are a part of it. Now, the the dean, uh, our religion, teaches us a very very simple simple thing, and that is that everything depends on our intention, our need. So whatever it is that we do, so long as it's not a clearly haram act, um, if we go into it with a, with a, with, with a pure intention, uh, with, a, with the intention of earning the, the pleasure of the Almighty, um, then that act uh, is, 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 is just as good as uh, as, 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 a, as an act of outright ibadah because it becomes ibadah when we take when we make that intention uh, we turn our actions our worldly actions into ibadah worship and so um, these are the you know these are the yama, these are the, the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has afforded us or accorded to us. Uh, so living in the world is not necessarily a bad thing at all. In fact, it's an important thing. And living in the world really means community. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeatedly sent down guidance to the believers through his prophet, uh, from the beginning of time until the last of the prophets, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we have received guidance of all kinds about how to... Jake, if I could just ask you to speak up just a little bit. Uh, some people are writing that they're having a hard time hearing you. It could be disturbance on the line. If I could just ask ah, you to speak okay. up a little bit, inshallah. Yeah. I apologize for interrupting. No, that's all right. Um, is this a little bit better? This is a lot better. Okay, good. So, when we've received all manner of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we understand that He has blessed us in our worldly life, even though it is the lesser of, of our lives. You know, there's a life to come which is the greater one. But this lesser one is very important. It's a, it's a means of achieving that greater life. And a part of that means is community. Uh, and from the very beginning, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us how to live in community. He has enjoined upon us uh, fraternity, brotherhood, and uh, closeness, cooperation, 
we have enjoined upon us truth in our dealings and transparency. All of these things uh, are a part of community. And one of the one of the keys to community building is partnership, coordinate uh, cooperation between believers, between people. Period. Uh, it's the very key element in the development of any kind of society. So when we're talking about um, how our community can strike a balance between home ownership and a fair of the dunya, uh, and uh, achieve, you know, working to achieve the greater afterlife. Well, the answer is simple, and that is that our dunya is very much a part of what we are striving for. So the better the, the better we can do here in this world, uh, the the better our chances are of going to uh, a better place in the afterlife. So the uh, in so far as the home ownership is concerned, again, community is all important. Because community means support. Um, it's it's the larger you know it's the larger extended family. Families have been uh, established uh, for the reason that that uh, we, we 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 support one another, we help one another, we assist in, in times of need and stress. Likewise with societies and communities, and so cooperation and partnership is key to all of this. Now. One of the uh, 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 our, our historically uh, our Islamic societies grew and prospered because of cooperation and partnership, um, and we developed our our civilization really grew up around uh, prosperous trading centers uh, like uh, Meknes in in Morocco. Or Algiers, or Alexandria, or Damascus, or Baghdad, or Mawara or Nahar, you know, all the way out to India and the Philippines and China, all over the world, uh, we established uh, Muslim centers of civilization through commerce and trade, which is essentially cooperation, societal cooperation, and uh, carrying on that same tradition here in the United States. Is going to be key for the development of our our own society, and and that is why it's so important uh, that we pay attention to the matter of home ownership. Not only is it a part of our community building, it's also a part of our being responsible neighbors or being viewed as responsible neighbors by the majority community here in the United States, the majority of the population, I mean, the non-Muslim population. Uh, if you're a voter, you're a, a homeowner, um, your status uh, in the United States is quite different uh, from uh, someone who is not. Uh, it makes a difference, ultimately, to, um, to, our, to, our, to the building of our community. You become members of the parent teachers association. You become volunteers in your local uh, fire departments and rescue squads. You become um, taxpayers. Uh, you vote locally and nationally and regionally. Uh, all of this is extremely important. And really, a lot of it has to do with one's becoming a homeowner. So, uh, in short, uh, the balance between dunya and uh, and home ownership, I think, is fairly clear. Uh, uh, the dunya is where we make our way to the afterlife, and we do that by having sincere intentions of winning the favor and pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by obeying His commandments, by doing the things that He enjoins us to do. And staying away from the things that he's asked us to abstain from. Part of all of this is developing a society, a Muslim society, in which believers can do what they need to do, what they want to do, for the pleasure of Allah, without any kind of outside interference with the respect of the larger community in the case of 
uh, Muslim minority communities here, for example, here in the U.S. and in so many other parts of the world. Um, I think uh, hopefully that that should um, at least provide a, a a framework for an answer to that question. Thank you very much, Sheikh Youssef. Dr. Mine, in order to build strong communities, home ownership is an important element. The community may be feeling a bit doubtful about growing wealth through home ownership in the current socio-political climate. How can we address their concern from a Sharia and economic point of view? Dr. Mine? Okay, so it looks, we'll come back to Dr. Mine and Shah. It looks like he's having some technical difficulties. I'm going to go to the next question, which is for you, Sheikh Yusuf, and we'll come back to Dr. Mine as soon as he logs back in, inshallah. Sheikh Yusuf, average American consumers who want to purchase or refinance a home without riba may not be well versed on the sophisticated details of fiqh. There is a misconception regarding the difference between a partnership contract and a loan contract. Can you explain to the audience what a musharaka based home ownership contract is and how is it different than a conventional home loan? And what are the differentiating factors of this model versus some of the other models? And I know this is a loaded question. So inshallah, the first part of the question is, and I'll repeat the second part later inshallah, is can you explain to the audience what a musharaka based home ownership contract is and how is it different than a conventional home loan? Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> to begin with, um, let's let's look at this from a uh, a, a philosophical perspective. Um, when we transact with others, um, we can do so in any number of ways, and certainly our uh, jurists, our Muslim jurists over the uh, centuries, have worked with Muslim traders and, and business people on all manner of contracts. I mean, there's a veritable ocean of literature on the subject of transacting uh, in, in every possible and imaginable way. Um, but one of the things that has always been out of bounds, prohibited uh, for uh, transacting in a Sharia compliant manner is the establishment of a borrower and lender relationship. From a Sharia perspective, lending is, in fact, a charitable act. When you lend your brother or your brother-in-law or your sister or your mother uh, or your friend uh, an amount of money, you do so for the sake of Allah. And out of a sense of, you know, uh, love or responsibility or affection or care, but you don't do so uh, as a result of, you know, in the hopes of making a profit. I mean, how can you profit from charity? That's inimical. It's, it's just, it, it's unacceptable from a, from a Sharia perspective. So borrowing and lending is a charitable act. Uh, it's not a business activity. Um, yes, there are ways of transacting with debt, but not in a charitable way. Um, and that's a whole different subject. But you know, from, from the just from the from the perspective of a fundamental principle. Now, unfortunately, the world today is based on interest, uh, the profit. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said once to his companions that there will come a time when the whole of the world will be overspread by riba, by interest, in such a way that it's like smoke. And even if you're not touched by the fire of interest, you will smell the smoke. And that's really what the situation is with us today. Whole, the whole, every economy in the whole, whole world is based on interest. Even the ways that, uh, the ways that economists measure progress or the lack of progress is by looking at, you know, tables of interest and, and, and rates of interest in central banks and around the world and in currencies and so on and so forth. 
So it's everywhere. But alhamdulillah, uh, over the last uh, several decades, most modern Muslim jurists have looked back into the past and <clears throat> developed for ourselves a an alternative method uh, or an alternative set of uh, methods for financing and investing and transacting based on Quranic principles and principles derived from and principles and practices derived from the Sunnah of the Prophet from the Law and Sunnah and the example of the Sahaba who followed him and those who followed after. So we have this incredible body of literature uh, and wisdom to draw from and alhamdulillah uh, working over the past you know, several decades, we've managed to develop alternatives that are very, very effective. Now, the Musharaka product, um, that specifically that is offered by guidance, is based on Musharaka, which is a partnership. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that partnership is key to developing uh, relationships in society. Uh, cooperation and transparency and accountability, all of these things are part of partnership. They, they spring from the concept of partnership. And so rather than lend money and establish a borrower-lender relationship between guidance and its client, guidance rather becomes a partner with its client and everything flows from that single concept. So um, rather than uh, go on, uh, maybe I should uh, talk about the second part of the question. And if you would uh, like to repeat that for me, uh, Sayyid Salman, I will, I will appreciate it. Thank you. No, my pleasure. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Yusuf. So the second part of the question was, what are some of the differentiating factors between the Musharaka? and other Islamic methods of financing, such as Ijara and Murabaha. Okay, yeah, let's talk about um, basic differences. Um, to begin with, as a partnership, what that means is that um, the company, that is guidance, and the client, you, the home buyer, you become partners. There's a uh, a part of the uh, documentation that's presented to you at the closing uh, is something called the co-ownership, uh, the co-ownership co contract. Um, obviously, this is divine, uh, defined uh, in, in its terms by uh, Sharia norms and practices and rulings. Uh, so that's one major difference. Uh, you become a partner with the financier rather than a debtor to the financier. Secondly, um, as such, uh, as a contract of partnership, the contract, there is no loan involved here. And without a loan, then likewise there is, there is no interest as well. So that's obviously a, a major factor uh, and one that um, you know, requires me to consider it. Secondly, or thirdly rather, uh, there's no recourse on this contract. This is a non-recourse contract. And this is an important point. Uh, and a major differentiating factor between a conventional loan and an Islamic home financing by means of Musharaka. Uh, in other words, when you become a partner with guidance, you become partners in a specific piece of property defined by the deed in your hand. In other words, you buy 471 Main Street in Akron, Ohio, let's say. That's, that's what you're holding with guidance. You hold a piece of it, and they own a piece of it. Um, what happens when you take a loan from a bank or from a mortgage company? What happens then is that, yes, 
471 Main Street in Akron, Ohio, is a part of the equation, but you haven't contracted for that piece of property. No. You have actually contracted for an amount of money. So let's say it's $500,000. If it should happen that uh, you are unable to uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, repay that amount of money, you miss whatever it is, three, two or three months worth of payments, the bank will foreclose. And they won't simply stop at repossessing the property that you hold, that you bought with their money. What they will ask for is the complete amount of money. So if the value of that property has fallen in the meantime, they'll go after you for the rest of the money. Why? Because you contracted with them not for the property, but for the money. So if your property is worth 450, then you, you're going to owe them. You're going to have to turn over the property to them. They'll repossess it, and then they will come after you for the extra fifty thousand dollars. They'll take it from your bank accounts. They'll take it from your savings. They'll take it from your college funds. Wherever they can get it. So that's recoil. A Sharia contract is a non. Pardon me. A, a Sharia contract of Musharrafa is a non. So there's a major difference. Um, another thing is that, um, well, uh, guidance is not a bank. Uh, guidance residential is uh, it's, it's owned by Muslims. Uh, it is funded by Muslims. Uh, its investors are, 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 are uh, in this, the initial investors are, are Muslims. Whereas a bank uh, is. Um, is a bank. Uh, it, it, it deals with uh, interest all the time. So, if you're dealing with guidance, you can be sure that there is no no kind of interest going on, either between you and, and guidance or between guidance and anyone else. Guidance does not deal in interest with anyone. Period. Um, for example, uh, even in the matter of late payments, uh, what happens with the bank is that they will charge you interest if you uh, if you're paying it for late. You know, a percentage, an interest percentage will be charged. With guidance, however, as with so many other uh, of our Islamic uh, financial institutions, late payments uh, are penalized. Yes, there is a penalty generally, but that penalty is never anything uh, more than uh, the amount required to uh, cover um, their taking care of those late charges. Uh, pardon me, they're taking care, their, their actual, uh, how do you call it, their actual uh, servicing of your account. Yes. So it's not a matter of interest. It's a matter of actual cost. Uh, there are calls to be made, letters to be sent out by law. They're required to inform you within a certain period of time, and then to inform you again. So they have to, you know, maintain records, and all of this costs a little bit of money. They'll charge you exactly that, no more. Um, that that was um, another guy, uh, just uh, basic difference. Um, uh, there are a number of other differences, but um, you know, just, uh, you know, right off the top of my head, these are some that uh, you know really matter to a consumer. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Yeah. Thank you, Sheikh Yusuf, very much for that response. Yeah. We do appreciate it, Dr. Main. The next question is for you. In order to build strong communities, home ownership is an important element. The community may not be feeling. The community may be feeling a bit doubtful about growing well through home ownership in the current socio-political climate. How can we address their concerns from a Sharia and economic point of view? No. Uh, there are certain uh, elements have been mentioned clearly in the Quran uh, to be necessities. 
which means that people at large are in desperate need for them in order for them to, to survive. Um, you read, for example, in the uh, in Surah Paha and the story of uh, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent him down to earth, uh, he guaranteed for him four things. He said, Inna laka alla tajua fiha wa la ta'ra wa annaka la tadma'u fiha wa la tadha. You will be provided food, drink, clothing, and a shelter. So from this uh, uh, story in Surah Taha, it's, it's clear that those are the basic and fundamental needs for people at large. A place to live in, uh, food, drink, and, and clothing. From a fiqh uh, perspective, there is a, a difference between, between fulfilling the uh, need of a dwelling, finding a place, whether that place is a, is a house or a, a domicile or a shelter or apartment or condo or, or whatever it might be, owning it from one side and finding a place to live in from the other side. Now, dwelling actually finding a place to live in is the necessity. However, that necessity could be fulfilled by renting, like finding, finding a rental property. You pay for it and you um, rent as long as that you know, place is uh, uh, safe, um, secure, spacious, uh, good enough for yourself and your family. Then your need actually has been fulfilled. Uh, of course, if there is a, a way for people, or for Muslims in particular, to own their homes in an Islamic way, that is way, way better than um, renting. Uh, imagine that you live in, in, in a house for uh, uh, 20, for 30 years, and every single month you pay, let's say, $2,000. And after 30 years, you just step out, owning absolutely nothing. The house is not yours, although you have paid a lot of, a lot of uh, money. Versus somebody else who has uh, made the right decision, by buying a house, buying a house. All what you pay for that house actually is yours. This is a long-term investment for yourself and for your uh, uh, family members after a long life, after your death. Taking care, actually, of the welfare of our families is a, is a pure Islamic uh, concept. This is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ himself uh, said when and one of the Sahaba was like over excited and he wanted to donate all of his money after his death. And the Prophet did not allow him. He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, how about uh, one half? He said, No, that's too much. How about one, uh, one third? He said, Athiluth, Athiluth Kathir. You can, you can donate to like non inheritors up to one third, and even one third is too much. And then he justified his fatwa وسلم, by saying, Leaving your, your inheritors wealthy in a very good situation is way better than leaving them poor, begging people. That's exactly what does it mean for you to own a house. As I said, you're going to leave back to your Lord one day. You need to take care of your family. You need to make sure that you leave enough poverty, enough wealth in a halal way for them to, to enjoy after, after your uh, death. The challenge that we uh, um, face here, actually, in, in the U.S., is how to, uh, since you're asking from a, like a pure fiqh sharia perspective, is how to make sure that those options are sharia compliant ones. Yes. If they are not, if they are not 100% sharia compliant ones, is there any option that is better than or more sharia compliant than others? And if the answer is yes, well, based on what? We need, we need a lot of education to make the proper judgment when we differentiate between X, Y, and Z options when it comes to Islamic finance in the U.S. Maybe this particular topic will be covered, inshallah, in the next question or questions. Inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Main, for that feedback. Dr. Main, you co-founded Guidance College, an educational institution that provides Islamic knowledge on various aspects of life including courses on fiqh of transaction. Can you explain how such courses may benefit Muslims in making ethical purchases in America? Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I, 
I love the, the, you know, the name guidance, whether it is guidance residential or guidance college. That's exactly what we are in desperate need for. We are in desperate need for Allah's guidance. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Huda Allah, he will Huda. Oh, Muhammad say Allah's guidance is, uh, is the guidance. Uh, I do believe that guidance residential is taking care of the practice part of Islamic finance by offering uh, interest free uh, Sharia compliant up to you know um, certain limit options for Muslims in the US. While guidance college actually focuses on the in the theoretical part, because Islamic finance actually is the theory and the and the practice. Since you asked me about guidance uh, college, now, alhamdulillah, we have uh, like more than one degree. One of them is a bachelor degree in Islamic studies. It's mm -hmm. a, like a general, yeah, general degree with no like area of uh, specialization. Within that program, actually, we do offer certain classes called fiqh of transaction or fiqh transactions, as you said. We focus actually a lot on defining those different modes of finance and what is the criteria okay, that has to be matched in order for every single mode of finance, whether it is musharaka or mubaraba or murabaha or ijara. Because unfortunately nowadays, some people might claim to apply a certain Islamic mode of finance. But when it comes to analyzing and just reading the contract, you know, deeply, Thoroughly, you would be surprised that that what is claimed, you know, out there is not implemented in reality. So, as an education institute, we focus on 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 defining those like different modes of finance, and we give some background for our students uh, regarding the you know the criteria and the meaning of sale contract and the, the definition of, of of riba, in order for our students to understand what does what does riba mean to start with. What's the difference between riba and, and sale? What does it mean when the Prophet uh, uh, says, لا تبع ما ليس عندك Do not sell what you do not own. Why he stipulated ownership before reselling that property or that commodity that you, that you own? It's all about taking the risk. It's all about you know, having that partnership that Sheikh Yusuf Khairan, emphasized a lot on it. Partnership means that that the two different contracting parties are either you know profiting together or losing together. We focus on, 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 on teaching our students the concept of Islamic finance as an ethical and socially responsible finance that cares about the well-being of the society at large. It's all about um, again you know profit and loss sharing. It's not a connection or relationship between a lender and a borrower. No. It's a, it's, a, it's a relationship between investor investor and someone who is benefiting from that investment. It could be um, equity based like like musharaka, like mudaraba. It could be debt based like murabaha, for example. However, even if it is a debt based one, there must be a certain level of risk involved in this transaction. So to make sure that the financier or the guidance residential or whatever the mortgage company might be, is taking a certain level of risk and that its profit is not guaranteed 100 percent. In guidance college, we have the very first, to my knowledge, the very first academic program in the whole U.S. Masters in Islamic uh, Finance. This is a very uh, specialized program. Uh, of course, in addition to teaching like the fiqh of, of transactions and emphasizing in more depth on, on different Islamic modes of finance, we teach the traditional you know, uh, finance subjects that other universities in the U.S. Uh, actually uh, teach. So what makes our graduates uh, different is that they have a very solid, very strong fiqh background, in particular in Islamic transactions or fiqh of Islamic transaction, as well as they understand, you know, the system and the rules and the regulations and the, and the limitations and the investment, you know, uh, uh, system and the finance system in the U.S. Hopefully, inshallah, in the long run, we can inject more, 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 um, you know, ethics and more, you know, um, I would say, you know, morality in the finance system in the in the in the U.S. The country that we live in and the country that we belong to. I mean, the well-being of the American society is a part of our, you know, mission 
as guidance strategy is it's a part of our mission as Muslim community living in this society. We look forward for the betterment of the society at large. What we are taking care of is the educational side, with the hope that our graduates will be will be community, you know, uh, builders and, and, and you know people who can guide others to the to the right path. Jazakallah khair, yeah, Dr. Mani, that was very interesting. Thank you so much for elaborating on that. Dear brothers and sisters, we will now have a live question and answer session. Please take a moment and write your questions in the question box. And if you're just joining us, we're having a live Q&A session with Sheikh Youssef and Dr. Mine, where you, the audience, have an opportunity to engage the scholars and ask questions. So we'll take a brief moment, inshallah, to allow you to write your questions, and we will, inshallah, engage our scholars. Okay, so this is a good question. Uh, one question came in from Muhammad Haris, and this question is for Sheikh Yusuf. Is it permissible for guidance residential to deal with Freddie Mac? Uh, well, thank you for the question. Yes, it is. Um, let's look at uh, the Muslim butcher who has a halal meat shop. Um, your question would equate to whether or not it would be permissible for that Muslim butcher to sell halal meat to uh, a Hindu neighbor or a Christian or a Jew or anybody else. And what I mean to say by that, quite simply, is that uh, to begin with, well, let's explain this. Freddie Mac is not a bank. I mentioned earlier that guidance has absolutely no dealings with any banks um, except as a servicer. In other words, they do the paperwork, uh, something called uh, you know, the, the, the monthly statements that are sent out to people. They have a bank actually that does that. But they pay them like they pay a plumber or any other professional who happens to do a task for them. Freddie Mac, however, by, uh, was created by an act of Congress, and in that act, it was clearly specified that Freddie Mac was not a lender or a borrower of money. Rather, it was created to inject liquidity into the home finance market. What that means is that Freddie Mac is an investor. It's a buyer, like your Christian neighbor who walks into the halal butcher shop and buys lamb because it's much better there than anywhere else. So likewise, Freddie Mac uh, <clears throat> buys property. It buys mortgages, in the, uh, property in the form of mortgages from conventional banks, and it buys property in the form of Mosharika con uh, contracts, actual equity from uh, from Islamic, uh, from from guidance. Uh, there may be others in the future who will deal with Freddie Mac, but at this point, uh, to my knowledge, uh, they're the only ones who actually sell their contract, the, uh, the Musharraka contracts, onwards to uh, to the buyer, Freddie Mac. So I hope that clarifies matters for you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Sheikh Yusuf. The next question is an anonymous question. It's for Dr. Main. What other courses are available for students of knowledge, and do you offer online courses? Well, as I said, in the bachelor uh, degree, uh, it does not have like a certain major like other similar degrees in the, in the Middle East or in the Muslim world. It's just a bachelor degree in Islamic studies. We definitely teach the main disciplines of Islamic studies, Arabic language uh, for non-Arabic speakers, the Islamic creed and comparative religion, different Muslim sects. We teach the, 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 the Islamic jurisprudence or Fiqh al-Islam and its foundation. We teach the Sunnah, the, the Hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu We teach the Quran and its, uh, and its uh, sciences. This is the uh, bachelor degree. We have two different masters in, in guidance uh, college. One of them, as I already elaborated on, the uh, executive masters in Islamic finance, where graduates could easily work in, in Islamic investment and mutual fund, and, and, and uh, like other other Islamic uh, banks or 
uh, Islamic-based uh, financial institutions in the U.S. or, or abroad. And the other program is uh, Masters in Islamic uh, Education, where we uh, uh, do believe that there is a desperate need, you know, to uh, enhance the quality of Islamic education and Islamic studies that we provide for our uh, students in Islamic schools in the in the U.S. Uh, we want to make sure that the teacher who teaches Arabic uh, as a second language, Quran and Islamic studies is as qualified as the one who teaches math and, and, and science. And this is exactly what we are doing in the Masters in Islamic uh, Education. And by the way, the registration for the fall 2017 is now open for students of knowledge who would like to join and see what kind of difference uh, in the quality of education guidance college actually is providing in comparison to other uh, Islamic universities. Dr. Man, just to clarify, did you say uh, are the classes online or do they have to be on campus or both? Yeah, it's a it's a hybrid program actually for Houstonian because actually we are located in Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, for local students, actually, they do have to uh, uh, come to the campus once a month, so three weeks online, uh, and the fourth week they come to the campus uh, on a, like on campus class. For um, uh, distant students, actually, they are away from coming to the campus, so it could be like taken you know, purely uh, online. So it depends on, on, on uh, where does the student live. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, very good. Thank you, Dr. Mine. Sheikh Yusuf Mohammed is asking, why is creating an LLC essential part of a partnership contract? Uh, well, to answer that, it's it's not an essential part. Uh, of uh, creating a contract. However, it uh, affords the um, consumer some protection uh, uh, and it also affords protection to uh, the other contracting parties, uh, whether it's Guidance or Freddie Mac. Uh, and that is that uh, the LLC basically sets up uh, the, um, the consumer uh, in a position where uh, uh, where, where uh, uh, they are uh, they can benefit from the uh, uh, pardon me from from, from the uh, from the distance. Um, I you know um, and the. the uh, LLC for one thing, and, and I should have mentioned this in my earlier uh, uh, answer to, to the earlier question, the LLC basically guarantees the, um, the integrity of the Sharia contract. In other words, it ensures that the terms insisted upon by the Sharia in that partnership contract should remain exactly the same without any change such that a new owner, for example, uh, like Freddie Mac, uh, is absolutely unable to make any kind of change in those terms. Mm. In other words, so this, this protects the, the Muslim, it, it ensures for the Muslim consumer that the contract will remain Sharia compliant from day one to the very end of the term. That's the most important thing. Otherwise, there are other legal, you know, legal this and that that, that have to do it. But as far as the consumer is concerned, that's the crux of the matter. And from our, our perspective, I mean, from the perspective of the Sharia supervisory, uh, boards that put the, you know, that, that, that put the stamp of approval on this. This was a key uh, to uh, you know one, one of the most important factors of all. So I hope that answers the question. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Sheikh Yusuf. Dr. Main, we have a question from Mustafa, who says, "Can you elaborate on the Masters in Islamic Finance degree that's offered by Guidance College, and what are the admission requirements? Are these available online?" Actually, all of them are available online, but basically uh, uh, only graduates uh, who hold a, a degree, they can join the Masters in Islamic Finance. 
the degree actually it's, uh, it's called executive masters in Islamic finance which means that it focuses more on the practice than on the uh, on the theory uh, uh, a lot of uh, classes are like you know traditional classes that are offered in different like you know uh, corporate finance and, and accounting uh, uh, and on and on however we we we, we tackle those issues Jazakallah khair. Thank you for the wonderful questions and Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Yusuf and Dr. Mayin for the informative answers. I will now ask our respected scholars for closing remarks and we'll begin by you, Sheikh Yusuf. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, participate. Uh, it's um, always a pleasure, as I mentioned earlier, to talk about Islamic finance, especially here in the United States, I believe that we have a very bright future ahead of us, uh, despite uh, you know the clouds on the horizon at the present time. Uh, these things will pass. Uh, our community continues to be uh, a growing and vib vibrant one, and certainly by means of ho home ownership um, and investment uh, and economic betterment our community will grow and establish itself as, as a vital part of American Amen. society. Inshallah. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Sheikh Yusuf. Dr. Mayin, your closing remarks? Dr. Mayin? Okay, so it looks like Dr. Mayin might have uh, got disconnected. I want to thank everyone for your time, especially Sheikh Yusuf and Dr. Mine for sharing your vast knowledge with us tonight. We truly, we truly benefited from it. Jazakallah khair. This concludes part one of our program. And brothers and sisters, before we begin part two, we'll take a short break and show you a short video. And inshallah, we'll start our other presentations shortly thereafter. Jazakallah khair. And stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum and I'd like to welcome you back to our live event hosted by Guidance Residential in collaboration with Guidance College. We will now begin the second section of our event which will consist of two short presentations by the host organizers, Guidance Residential and Guidance College. The presentations are intended to provide you, the audience, with more information about the two organizations. Now before we begin the first presentation by Guidance Residential, please respond to the poll question that you see on your screen. All right, we will now begin the guidance residential presentation, which is intended to give you a background about who we are, how our program works, and we'll have a question and answer session at the end where you, the audience, can ask questions, and inshallah, we will answer them. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim guidance residential, the number one provider of Islamic home financing. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I'm very proud to say that guidance residential is a Muslim-owned organization. The parent company is Capital Guidance, and the chairman of their organization is Dr. Mohammed Hamour. Now you might be interested to know that Capital Guidance has a very strong global footprint. As you can see, we have 77 offices and 27 countries. And the dots on the map represent the type of business we do in the different locations we do that. So for example, you'll see investment management, real estate, luxury home products, global industrial services, and international financial services. Now let's bring it back local to Guidance Residential. We were founded in 2002. Guidance Residential today is the number one provider of Islamic home financing in America. In 2002, we started out with operations in three states. Alhamdulillah, we're celebrating our 15-year anniversary in 2017, and we're operational in 28 states. Alhamdulillah, having financed about $4.5 billion worth of financing and proudly serving about 18,000 households uh, achieve the American dream of home ownership. And as you can see on the screen, we've been recognized by the media, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, to name a few. Now, I want you to know about the guidance difference. The number one difference, and something that we're very proud of, is that we have a leading international Sharia Board of Scholars who have reviewed and approved our program. And very shortly, I'm going to introduce you to these scholars so you know exactly who they are. 
Also, I'm very proud to say that the Assembly of Muslim Jurists of America, AMJA, has named Guidance Residential and our Declining Balance Co-ownership Program as a permissible path for American Muslims in need of home financing. And then I also want to mention Pure Play because I think it's important. Everything that we do, brothers and sisters, from A to Z is Sharia compliant. All our products and services are Sharia compliant. We are not a bank. The only services that we offer are Islamic financing. Now, we mentioned our independent Sharia board. Here they are. And I want to take a quick moment and introduce you to these scholars. The chairman of our Sharia board is Justice Muhammad Taki Usmani, who is from Pakistan. And he's literally speaking the leader in Islamic home financing worldwide. We have Sheikh Yusuf Talal De Lorenzo from the United States, who we recently heard from. Sheikh Nizam Yaqubi from Bahrain. Dr. Mohammed A. Al Ghari from Saudi Arabia. Dr. Abdul Sattar Abu Ghada from Syria. Dr. Imran Ashraf Usmani, who's the son of Mufti Taki Usmani from Pakistan. And last, certainly not least, Dr. Mohammed Dawood Bakr from Malaysia. Now, brothers and sisters, the Musharaka contract, or in English we call it a declining, co declining balance co-ownership program, is very, very simple. Alhamdulillah. And what we did over here is we broke it down for you in four very simple steps. On the top of your screen, you're going to see a Sharia compliant contract, and we're going to compare and contrast that to a conventional mortgage. So let's start out with a Sharia compliant contract. Step number one, the home buyer and guidance agree to be co-owners in the property. And I'm going to stop for a moment and just talk about this. You see, one of the primary differences, and this is a common question that I saw in the question box, is what is the primary difference between guidance residential and a conventional mortgage? And brothers and sisters, it's the actual contract. Like Sheikh Yusuf mentioned, a loan in Islam is an act of charity. And we cannot make a profit on a charity. We cannot even imagine that. If you really think about it, making a profit on charity, uh, it's almost disgusting, right? So Alhamdulillah, our transaction is based on a co-ownership agreement. And if you go to step number two on the Sharia compliant contract, the two parties buy the home and the ownership in the property is determined by each party's down payment. So in this scenario, you the buyer put down 30% and guidance residential put down 70%. And don't worry, the 30% is just an example. We do have programs where you could put down as little as 5%, but this is just an example. Now let's go to step number three because this is a crucial step in the process and understanding how this works. The home buyer makes monthly payments to guidance residential. Part of the payment is a utility fee for the full use of the home and the rest is a payment to increase the buyer's ownership in the property. Brothers and sisters, the objective of this partnership agreement is to buy us out. We don't want to be 70% for the lifetime of the contract and you certainly don't want to be 30%. So as you can see, as you continue making your payments, your ownership is always increasing and our ownership is decreasing and as you can see you went from 30 to 45 percent ownership and we went down from 70 to 55 and step number four over the course of the arrangement the home buyer purchases all of guidance residential's ownership stake and becomes the sole owner of the property this is the objective alhamdulillah to buy us out and become a hundred percent owner of the property now let's compare and contrast that to a conventional mortgage Step number one, the home buyer arranges a loan from a bank or mortgage company according to a fixed or floating interest rate. The number one difference, but again, if we compare step number one on the Sharia compliant and step number one in the conventional mortgage is the actual contract. A conventional bank is lending you money. Guidance Residential is not lending you money. And instead, we're creating a partnership agreement. Let's go to step number two on a conventional mortgage. The home buyer purchases the home. Step number three, the home buyer makes monthly payments to repay the principal and interest on the loan. Step number four, over the course of the loan, the home buyer repays the debt in full. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, Islamic financing is very simple. Alhamdulillah, it's not rocket science or I wouldn't be here. Alhamdulillah, I want to break it down for you one more time. If you ever wanted to understand how Islamic financing works, first understand how riba works. If you don't understand the riba, you will never understand Islamic financing. Like Sheikh Yusuf said, a loan in Islam is an act of charity. And a profit cannot be made on a loan transaction. So how does Islamic financing work? Step number one, home buyer and guidance purchase a property through a partnership agreement. Step number two, home buyer exclusively utilizes the property. We don't come and live in the property with you, obviously. Step number three, the home buyer makes monthly payments for both utilizing the property and gaining ownership. So when you're making your monthly payment, 
a portion is going towards a utilization fee. Think about it kind of like a rent for utilizing our portion of the property. And another portion is towards gaining ownership, the acquisition. So every month, again, your ownership is increasing and our ownership is decreasing until step number four, over the course, the home buyer becomes 100% owner of the property. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, take a snapshot of this screen. This is how simple and easy, alhamdulillah, Islamic financing is. Now, I want to talk to you briefly about some benefits of a Musharaka contract because I think it's very important. And we offer a lot of unique benefits that nobody else in the conventional market or other Islamic institutions for that matter offer. The number one benefit, I'm going to go back to this because I think it's very important, Sharia compliance, brothers and sisters. We're here to offer you a Sharia compliant product. And you're here, obviously, because you're looking forward to getting yourselves into a Sharia compliant product. Alhamdulillah, like I mentioned previously, our program has been reviewed and approved by scholars from around the world who specialize in Islamic financing. Another major benefit in our program is we have a non-recourse commitment. God forbid in the case of a foreclosure, if there's a loss, we take 100% of that loss and walk away, and we do not go after your personal assets. Like Sheikh Yusuf was mentioning, after foreclosure, what happens? Bankruptcy. The bank is coming after you because they don't forgive you for that loss. Alhamdulillah, with Guidance Residential, you have that peace of mind. And this is a unique benefit that nobody else offers. There are some states that mandate this, but nobody else voluntarily offers this benefit. There is no prepayment penalty. I saw a lot of questions in the question box about this. So brothers and sisters, if you make extra payments, and I'll tell you something, even a little bit helps a lot. You make $100 extra every month, you make $50 extra a month, or as much as you can, it makes a big difference. You save time and you save money. If you sold a property back home, and you want to bring that money back over here and pay off your, mortgage, uh, your contract with Guidance Residential, you can certainly do that. There is no prepayment penalty. Also, if you want to sell your house that you have with Guidance Residential, you could do that. That also falls under a no prepayment penalty. You can do that. There is no penalty, and the uh, proceeds of the gain are 100% yours. Alhamdulillah. And you know, it only gets better. Alhamdulillah, there's some more benefits in terms of shared risk. God forbid. In the case of a natural disaster, if the house is destroyed, we actually take part in that loss with you. Brothers and sisters, there is nobody in America that does that. Another major benefit that we share in the loss is in the case of eminent domain. Eminent domain, for those of you who may not know, is when the government forcefully purchases your property when they're extending a government project. So if there's a highway and they're extending the highway and your house is in the way, or a road and your house is in the way, or what we saw in Chicago, a hair airport, there were some houses in the way, right? We read articles that there was eminent domain. The government was buying those houses. Now, what happens is, is that government gives you the assessed value. When they forcefully purchase your house, they give you the assessed value. And for those of you who have a background in real estate or even the mortgage industry, you know that there's a difference between the assessed value and the market value. So, alhamdulillah, we take part in that loss with you. There is nobody else in America that does that. Lastly, that I want to mention tonight in terms of benefits of the Musharaka, we do not make a profit on late payments. A lot of financial institutions, they make profits of up to 5% on late payments. If you can imagine that, we do not do that. We charge you the cost of administering the late payment. And Alhamdulillah, we have that capped at $50. So brothers and sisters, what's next? The first step that I recommend for you is connecting with an account executive. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that. The first thing you could do is you could go to guidanceresidential.com. You can click on contact us and you'll see there's a lot of local real, there's a lot of local account executives in your areas. We do a lot of business where all of you are in Texas, Florida, New York, California. We have local account executives in all of these areas ready, qualified and willing to help you uh, finance the house of your dream with a peace of mind of moving forward with no riba. So the first thing you want to do is connect with an account executive. Another simple, easy thing that you can do is go to guidanceresidential.com forward slash pre-qualify. This is a very simple four-step process where you can actually get pre-qualified on our website and get a follow-up appointment with an account executive that's going to go over all of your options with you, brothers and sisters. It's a very simple and streamlined process. I encourage you, if you're looking to purchase a property and buy your dream home and you're looking for that peace of mind, please do so, inshallah. And if you already have a mortgage, and you don't have that peace of mind and you want to convert over to Islamic financing, I encourage you to visit us on guidanceresidential.com, connect with an account executive, and inshallah we look forward to serving you. 
Lastly, I wanted to mention to you, when you finance with Guidance Residential and buy with the GuidanceRealty.com real estate agent, you can receive up to a $500 appraisal credit at closing. Alhamdulillah. This, brothers and sisters, concludes my presentation. I do want to have a quick question and answer before we go to the next presentation by Guidance College, where we're going to see a short video, and then we're going to give the mic, inshallah, so to speak, to Dr. Mine, who's going to speak to us for a little while. But I do want to address some of your questions that I see coming on the question box. Okay, Ayub is asking what I, what I need to be eligible for Islamic financing. So in the pre-qualification process, Ayub, we basically look at a few things. We look at credit, income, and assets. And I want you to know the pre-qualification process is a free process, it's a simple process. Once we look at these factors and spend five or 10 minutes on the phone with you, we can tell you number one, how much you qualify for, how much is the minimum down payment you need to put down, what's your monthly payment gonna look like, because that's important, right? What your estimate closing costs are. So when you're done with the conversation, you have a lot of valuable information that you need to know when you go out in the market and look forward to purchasing a property. Inshallah, let's go to the next question. Okay, so we have Ben Ali. Ben Ali is asking, guidance fees are higher than regular banks. Why are some of the fees so high? So Ben Ali, I want to, this is a great question, and I'm glad that you asked. I encourage everyone tonight, inshallah, if you're still logged on to the internet, obviously, go to guidanceresidential.com. We actually, what we do on a very regular basis is disclose our pricing and the prices in the conventional market. And you'll notice that our pricing is actually, Ben Ali, very competitive. I do agree with you that 15 years ago, yes, the pricing was a little bit higher because we were very new in the market. We were just getting a foothold of this industry. But I'll tell you something, Ben Ali, after 15 years of doing this, alhamdulillah, we have gained a lot of ground, a lot of growth, and uh, our pricing is very, very competitive. I'm gonna go to the next question, inshallah. Okay, Farhan is asking, if the partnership is a complete one, why doesn't guidance take part in the tax or the insurance? So that's a very good question, uh, Farhan. I want you to know that there's different types of musharakas. And you know, when you say musharaka, and those who study Islamic financing, musharaka is a very detailed subject, right? So even within the musharaka, there's a lot of different types of musharakas. A lot of people, when they say business, uh, partnership, they, they subconsciously think of a sharakat al-aqad, which is a business venture. In a business venture, everything is shared 50-50. If, if I bought a gas station with my colleague Tony over here, we're gonna put down 50% each, and then everything is shared down the line. I want you to know the type of musharaka that we offer is not a sharakat al-aqad, it's a sharakat al-milk. A sharakat al-milk is basically a partnership agreement with terms and conditions that we both agreed upon with the objective of one partner buying out the other. And I do wanna mention about homeowners insurance. We actually do have an option to share that with you. And if you're interested in that, contact an account executive on guidanceresidential.com and inshallah we can discuss that in more detail. I'm gonna to go to another question that just came in. Okay, so we have a question that just came in from Sadia and she's asking, do you have a fatwa on all of the stuff that we're talking about? So, Sadi, I want you to know, first of all, that's a great question. Again, I want you to visit guidanceresidential.com, click on resource. We have all of our fatwas over there and on the various different topics that you can think of, disclosures, there's a main fatwa, fatwa on mortgage insurance, and a lot of other valuable information, including frequently asked questions. And there's also a section that we have for videos, which I think you'll find very interesting, inshallah. I wanna take one last question. I know Dr. Main is uh, waiting, inshallah. So one more question from the audience, and then we'll move on, inshallah. Dawood asked a very interesting question. So Dawood is asking what happens in the time of the demise of a homeowner. So God forbid there's a homeowner and they were to pass away. What happens in that is the family inherit the property so what happens is, God forbid, if somebody passes, uh, the, the spouse or whoever the adult children are, they assume the ownership in the property. 
and they assume the contract with guidance residential. So at that stage, they have the right and the options to continue making their payments. If they feel that selling the house is an option that they want to consider, they can actually sell the house. And when you sell a house, uh, all of the net proceeds are 100% yours. We don't share in that, alhamdulillah, in any circumstance. So alhamdulillah, in that type of a situation, we are, you're covered, alhamdulillah. So inshallah, I'm going to conclude my presentation over here. And inshallah, we're going to watch a short video by uh, Guidance College, followed by a speech from Dr. Mine. And Dr. Mine, I'm going to go ahead and give the mic, so to speak, to you, inshallah. The floor is all yours. I think the, the promotional video that we have seen is a lot about guidance uh, college. Uh, briefly, every project has a vision behind it. And actually, our vision is to have guidance college that should be one of the top well-recognized universities in the United States that offers undergraduate and graduate degrees in specialized Islamic fields, aiming, preparing leaders for the righteous people. We started the uh, offering classes back in 2012. Uh, what makes us different actually is more than one thing. Number one, our uh, seriousness in taking the uh, regional accreditation issue. Alhamdulillah, in the United States, we have a lot of Islamic institutes, higher education institutes, universities and colleges. They offer uh, you know, Islamic studies and they do a wonderful job. The vast majority of them, if not even all of them, are non-accredited institutes re regionally in the U.S. And this actually makes, uh, makes it hard for students college or university for job opportunity purposes in the near future whenever they graduate. So from our side, we, we, I mean, we paid and we are still paying a lot of attention to the, you know, uh, accreditation process. Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are about to be approved by the Texas uh, Board of Education, which is the highest acknowledgement statewide. Uh, after that, within inshallah a few months from now, will be applying for SACS, Southern Association of Colors and Schools, which is one of the most prestigious accreditation bodies in the U.S. Once we get accredited, our students can apply for financial aid and for scholarship. They can do a credit transfer from and to uh, Guidance College. Students of knowledge from uh, outside the Muslim community, students of knowledge from any, any university, from any, you know, uh, religious uh, tradition or background, they can join Guidance College to learn more about Islam. One of the main concerns that we have in the U.S. is that um, people who want to learn about Islam, they do not have the right authentic and sound resource for learning purposes. Unfortunately, they get their information about Islam from unauthentic and unauthorized resources. It is time for the Muslim community to stand for their right and to establish a genuine and sound and, and, and relevant and authentic uh, Islamic institutes in the U.S., acknowledged by the educational system in a very, very positive way, penetrating actually the educational system and make it available for people of knowledge and students of knowledge to get the right information about, about Islam. A lot of people have a lot of, you know, misconceptions and misunderstanding about you know, Islam as, as a creed, Islam as a practice, Islam as a ritual. A lot of people have like different views about jihad and women in Islam and the difference between terrorism and, and jihad and on and on. So our job actually is to educate the community at large, Muslims and non-Muslims as well. That's from one side. From the other side, we offer programs that we do believe the Muslim community is in need for. We do not, with all due respect, we do not copy and paste from other universities whether in the U.S. or, or, or abroad. We design, uh, actually we custom design, if you wish, 
our own programs because we know what is exactly Muslims in the U.S. need. Bachelor degree in Islamic studies that qualifies the graduate to work as an imam, as an Islamic studies and Arabic as a second language uh, teacher, as a preacher, uh, as a chaplain maybe in the, in the American army, in the correctional facilities and hospitals and different, different uh, facilities. As I already explained, we have two masters. If you visit our website, by the way, you might not, well, you will not see those two programs. Uh, we have been requested by the Board of Education to put them aside for a certain period of time for accreditation purposes. So, inshallah, within a few weeks from now, you will see the Masters in Islamic Finance and the Masters in Islamic Education up and running on our uh, website. However, the, the, the two programs actually do exist, and we have been offering courses, uh, I would say, for the last three years, and those two different uh, programs, alhamdulillah. The matter of fact, some of our students might might graduate soon, but again, for accreditation uh, purposes, we are not allowed to have them on our website until they are fully approved by the Board of Education in the state of Texas. Definitely, the medium of education is English, and this is one of the, uh, I would say, niches of a uh, guidance uh, college. Uh, we love to teach Islamic studies in the language of the Quran and the Sunnah, but unfortunately, the vast majority of our students here in the U.S. do not understand the language of the Quran and the Sunnah. So we have to speak their uh, language and translate the knowledge and the information that we have into the language that they uh, understand. Why we have Masters in Islamic Finance and Masters in Islamic Education? Because there is a dire need for you know, people who hold degree in Islamic finance who can enhance the, the, the American uh, finance system with more ethics, with more morals, with more justice for all the uh, parties involved in, in finance. Why we have masters in Islamic education? Because we have to enhance the quality of Islamic knowledge and Islamic education that we provide for uh, our students in different Islamic uh, schools in the, uh, in the U.S. Hopefully, inshallah, in the near future, after we get our accreditation, we might uh, de uh, develop a PhD program in different, different uh, fields, inshallah. Uh, one more time, thank you so much for guidance uh, residential for this uh, webinar. We all uh, love education. We would love actually to meet over and over and to be in touch with our community, with the Muslim community, with the American you know, community at large for more education, for more transparency, for more proper understanding of Islam and its principles, and how does Islam actually benefit the American society at large? Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair to you, Dr. Main. You're a pillar in the community, and we truly appreciated your participation tonight. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Wa alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Main. Brothers and sisters, I'm very pleased to announce to you that we actually have a surprise guest for you, uh, the president of Guidance Realty Homes, Hossam Qutb. He's going to be sharing a small presentation with us, inshallah. I'm going to go ahead and put on the presentation by President Hossam Qutb. Uh, Hossam, are you on the line with us? Uh, Assalamu as alaikum, Salman. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Jazakallah khair. Welcome. And it's great to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Salman. Um, I'd like to just first begin by saying assalamu alaikum uh, and good evening to everyone on this webinar. Um, it's a pleasure to be here uh, among such distinguished individuals and scholars like the ones that uh, preceded me here. Uh, I, I want to first begin by also saying assalamu alaikum to Sheikh Yusuf Tadar Renzo. It's uh, great to... Uh, uh, to hear him speak, uh, I've always, it's ever since I've met him years, years ago, uh, it's, it's just been a treat to actually learn and gain so much knowledge from him. also want to give salams to uh, Dr. Ma'al Quda and congratulate him on such uh, incredible progress with Guidance College, um, which, um, which I think is, is, is incredibly impressive um, to, to, to the level of academic um, uh, progress that's been made. Um, so I'll begin by, I guess, just first introducing Guidance Realty Homes, um, which, which is a company that we formed as a subsidiary of Guidance Financial Group uh, to mainly broaden the parent company's longstanding commitment and leadership 
in serving the, the, the Muslim American community's residential housing needs. Um, we all know we've been serving the American Muslim community for 15 years through this unique, um, unique um, mortgage structure and been doing a, a fine job at it. Uh, but we thought long and hard in 2013 about ancillary services to the, to the American Muslim community and beyond. Um, and that service really was mainly focused on that, 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 that secondary step after understanding your financial qualifications. The secondary step is actually identifying uh, the home, the property, um, and seeking advice and counsel from uh, professional realtors um, is something that we felt there were so many American Muslim realtors doing a fantastic job serving the community um, and uh, knew exactly what the community needed or, or, or desired um, and so we felt this was a natural uh, step towards um, broadening our commitment to uh, leadership in, in serving the community around housing. So it, 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 Established in 2014, Guidance Realty Homes today is a multi-state real estate brokerage uh, company um, focused mainly on providing simple, comprehensive solutions to clients in pursuit of buying or even selling a home. Um, the markets we operate in um, cover now, uh, we went from two states to uh, now covering six states uh, in a relatively short period of time. Um, we currently have over 75 real estate professionals catering to the needs of, of our valued clients. Uh, the state's map that, I, that you'll see is our, where our realty footprint is today um, in relation to Guidance Residential's footprint. And so our current branches are in New York, Chicago, the D.C. metropolitan area, uh, Dallas, Houston, uh, Florida, uh, we're in Orlando and in Tampa and just recently in, in, in South Florida as well. Our aim is to continue growing and have a presence uh, around where our sister company, Guidance Residential uh, Services, are provided. So um, when, when we expand into these states, we look for um, leaders who can really help us uh, uh, maintain the standards that our company expects and um, we've amassed in the last uh, three and a half years um, uh, five, five incredible leaders uh, in residential real estate and, and some small commercial as well real estate. Um, between the five of them uh, that we have, these are our brokers, uh, our managing brokers for, the, for our branches. Uh, who oversee the operation of, of our realtors. Um, but between these five, we have nearly 70 plus years of experience, which is incredible. Um, I'll mention just, just one individual who, mashallah, uh, uh, our last broker that we brought on in the state of Texas, uh, Subhi Gharbiya, um, was actually featured on Real, Realtor Magazine um, uh, a few years ago and was selected as top 30 under 30. Uh, amongst the um, amongst basically all realtors across the nation, um, so the caliber of the individuals that we bring on are ones that really meet the standards of our company in terms of serving uh, our valued clients. Um, the next slide shows kind of what we are attempting to do, and that is really simply uh, it's, it's to simplify the home buying process. Um, we have a website uh, which is guidancerealtyhomes.com or mygrh.com uh, to keep it short and on this website you'll notice that you can search for homes in these markets that we're in today you can search for homes listed uh, for sale on the MLS and um, you can learn as well about the neighborhood the neighborhood scores the nearby schools uh, entertainment hospitals and also something very unique that you won't find anywhere else on any other website you can you can also look at the distance from these homes to the nearest Islamic schools or masajids. Uh, we felt that was an, a nice added added feature that would relate to our to our demographic to our main demographic, uh, the American Muslim community, um, and we worked with partners to provide that uh, uh, real time and and um, essentially 
um, uh, as updated as updated data comes in, um, we actually post it right away. Um, so we you have access to essentially 75 plus realtors. We're growing. We're adding realtors on a consistent basis. Those who share our values and our and our and our um, passion and 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 really for serving uh, folks in the home buying and selling area. On the on the site, you can also pre-qualify for Islamic Home Financing. Um, you can even submit a propo uh, submit information about your current home to understand the value of that home. So if you're thinking about selling in order to downsize or if you're thinking about selling in order to move into a, a, a bigger property, your family might be growing, um, our, our listing professionals uh, can help you, uh, can advise you and help you uh, market your home in an effective manner to, to make sure you, you receive the most for your home. Um, the very last slide that I, I'd like to also uh, inform folks about is we're constantly looking for, as we expand, especially um, uh, professionals in real estate. Uh, our team today is composed of outstanding industry professionals, uh, and many of them are leading the way in both local communities and the national at large. Um, and we provide that we provided them a unique opportunity for uh, for growth uh, and uh, essentially uh, for for uh, prospering in, in 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 real estate. So uh, these are some of the things that we offer our agents. If you are currently a real estate agent and have uh, have have focused on the American Muslim community in your neighborhoods, um, uh, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Um, we'd love to have you become a member of of our family. Um, we offer a very competitive package with incredible support in technology, um, transaction coordinators in each branch to help facilitate all the, all the all of that paperwork that can drive folks uh, uh, up the wall. So um, we, we essentially provide incredible support and that is so that you can focus your uh, uh, time and efforts on our most valuable resource and that's the client. So. Um, uh, that is that is essentially my presentation. I'm going to conclude that for now and turn it back to you, Salman. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Hassan. This was a very pleasant surprise. I do appreciate you being on with us today. I'd like to thank everyone in the audience for being with us tonight. Thank you again for taking the time and being here and being part of this engaging part, uh, participation. Thank you again to Sheikh Yusuf and Dr. Mayan for being with us tonight. We learned so much from both of you. And you know, we were really overwhelmed by a lot of the questions you guys had. So there were so many questions that were coming in and time just simply does not permit us to answer all of them. But I do want you to know, we are gonna be posting your answers on social media. And also don't forget, call us, uh, go to our website, connect with an account executive like we talked about, and you'll get immediate answers to your questions. I wanna thank everyone and again, Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.